Do not muzzle the ox while it's treading out the grain. That's an obscure command from the Old Testament that the New Testament picks up in terms of, well, feeding your workers, looking after them, and it's applied in the New Testament to ministry workers. But we're finishing off in Joshua today, the great list of the division of the lands. And we can see that that's the principle at work as uh, the final allocation of, of, of property is to the Levites, the tribe of Israel who weren't to receive uh, a state like the rest of them. There's no uh, area of Dan or Levi, uh, sorry, Simeon or any of the others that's equivalent for the Levites. Instead, well, let's see how they're provided for as Joshua divvies up the land. We're in Joshua chapter 21. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. And we pray, please, that you bless us as we see this final list of the names of cities and places in Joshua. Uh, we pray, please, that you grant us understanding, help me to read it clearly, uh, but also to learn how it is that you operate in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we're in Joshua chapter 21, and we pick it up at verse 1. The Levite family heads approached the priest Eleazar, Joshua son of Nun, and the family heads of the Israelite tribes. At Shiloh in the land of Canaan, they, uh, they told them, The Lord commanded through Moses that we be given cities to live in with their pasture lands for our livestock. So the Israelites, by the Lord's command, gave the Levites these cities with their pasture lands from their inheritance. The lot came out for the Kohathite clans, the Levites, who were the descendants of the priest Aaron, received 13 cities by lot from the tribes of Judah, Simeon, and Benjamin. The remaining descendants of Kohath received 10 cities by lot from the clans of the tribes of Ephraim, Dan, and the half the tribe of Manasseh. Goshon's descendants received 13 cities by lot from the clans of the tribes of Issachar, Asher, Naphtali, and half the tribe of Manasseh in Bashan. Merari's descendants received 12 cities for their clans from the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and Zebulun. The Israelites gave these cities with their pasture lands around them to the Levites by lot as the Lord had commanded through Moses. The Israelites gave these cities by name from the tribes of the descendants of Judah and Simeon to the descendants of Aaron from the Kohathite clans of the Levites because they received the first lot. They gave them Kiriath Arba, that is Hebron. Arba was the father of Anak, with its surrounding pasture lands in the hill country of Judah. But they gave the fields and settlements of the city to Caleb, son of Jephunah, as his possession. They gave to the descendants of the priest Aaron, Hebron, the city of refuge, for one uh, who commits manslaughter with its pasture land. Libna with its pasture lands, Jatir with its pasture lands, Eshtemoa with its pasture lands, Holon with its pasture lands, Debir with its pasture lands, Ain with its pasture lands, Juta with its pasture lands, and Beshemesh with its pasture lands. Nine cities from these two tribes. From the tribe of Benjamin they gave Gibeon with its pasture lands, Geba with its pasture lands, Anathoth with its pasture lands, and Almon with its pasture lands, four cities. All 13 cities with their pasture lands were for the priests, the descendants of Aaron. The allotted cities, uh, the, sorry, the, yeah, the allotted cities to the remaining clans of Kohath's descendants, who were Levites, came from the tribe of Ephraim. The Israelites gave them Shechem, the city of refuge, for the one who commits manslaughter, with its pasture lands in the hill country of Ephraim, Giza with its pasture lands. Kizayim, or so Kibzayim with its pasture lands, and Beth Horon with its pasture lands, four cities. From the tribe of Dan they gave Eltake with its pasture lands, Gibbethon with its pasture lands, Ajalon with its pasture lands, and Gathrimon with its pasture lands, four cities. From half the tribe of Manasseh they gave Tanakh with its pasture lands, and Gathrimon with its pasture lands, two cities. All ten cities with their pasture lands were for the clans of Kohath's other descendants. From the half-tribe of Manasseh they gave to the descendants of Gershon, who were one of the Levite clans, Golan, the city of refuge for the one who commits manslaughter, with its pasture lands in Bashan, and Bishra in its pasture lands, two cities. From the tribe of Issachar they gave Kishion with its pasture lands, Dabarath with its pasture lands, 
Jarmoth with its pasture lands, and Enganon with its pasture lands, four cities. From the tribe of Asher they gave Mishael with its pasture lands, Abdon with its pasture lands, Hekath with its pasture lands, and Rehob with its pasture lands, four cities. From the tribe of Naphtali they gave Kedesh in Galilee, the city of refuge for one who commits manslaughter, with its pasture lands, Hamathor with its pasture lands, and Kartan with its pasture lands, three cities. All thirteen cities with their pasture lands were further Gershonites by their clans. From the tribe of Zebulun they gave the clans of the descendants of Merari, who were the remaining Levites, Jokneum with its pasture lands, Carter with its pasture lands, Dimnah with its pasture lands, and Nahalal with its pasture lands, four cities. From the tribe of Reuben they gave Bezer with its pasture lands, Jaza with its pasture lands, Kedemoth with its pasture lands, and Mephaar with its pasture lands, four cities. From the tribe of Gad, they gave Ramoth in Gilead, the city of refuge, for the one who commits manslaughter with its pasture lands, Mahayim and its past, with its pasture lands, Heshbon with its pasture lands, and Jazir with its pasture lands, four cities in all. All twelve cities were allotted to the clans of Merari's descendants, the remaining Levite clans. Within the Israelite possession, there were four, uh, 48 cities in all with their pasture lands for the Levites. Each of these cities had its own surrounding pasture lands. This was true for all the cities. So the Lord gave Israel all the land he had sworn to give their fathers, and they took possession of it and settled there. The Lord gave them rest on every side, according to all he had sworn to their fathers. None of their enemies were able to stand against them, for the Lord handed over all their enemies to them. None of the good promises the Lord had made in the house of Israel failed. Everything was fulfilled. Well, there's the great long list of names and uh, very glad to have got to the end of it. Uh, I think I've done okay getting through them all. But uh, it's very interesting, isn't it, that here is uh, a special dispensation given to uh, the tribe of Levi, as I said before, uh, and we've heard mentioned many, many times as the land's been allocated, uh, Levites aren't going to get a territory. They're not going to get a, a state. Uh, the whole land is broken up into 12 pieces. Uh, and to make up for the fact that Levi, one of the 12 tribes, isn't going to get one of the allocations, Joseph's uh, uh, tribe is broken into half, into Ephraim and to, into Manasseh. And so we keep hearing about the half tribe of Manasseh and half tribe of Ephraim right through all the allocations. And we heard it again today. But notice uh, several things. Notice that the cities that the Levites are going to have are going to include their pasture lands, right? Their, their welfare is being taken care of. Uh, this is a way of really caring for these people who are singled out and special. You might remember back uh, at when Moses was up on the mount receiving the law of God, the Ten Commandments and so on. He had been up there and came down to find the people had already committed apostasy and had built a golden calf and were having a, a, a drunken orgy uh, in worship of this God that they had created with their own hands. And it was the Levites who had rallied to Moses uh, in order to uh, purify the nation. And they'd drawn swords and killed a whole bunch of people. And uh, you can go and read about that in Exodus 32. But the Levites have been singled out from that point to be the priests of the Lord, the protectors of his name, the intermediaries between the people and God. And uh, as part of that, they're not to um, go about their work and run a state in the same way that the other are going to have to, right? Their work is to be devoted to this work of the priesthood uh, um, permanently. And so the land that they get, though, they are to you know, provide for themselves in some way. The, the nation is providing for them and they are to do work. Um, but all of it is to say that they're spread throughout the entire nation. And so there's 48 cities mentioned there with their pasture lands. And they're spread through every one of the other tribes' allocation. So all of them had to give up something in order to care for the priests of the nations. Uh, and I guess in one sense, it is a fulfillment of that command of Moses that do not muzzle the ox while it's treading out the grain. 
Uh, Luke talks about that in his gospel from the lips of Jesus. Uh, Paul repeats that several times in the pastoral epistles in 1 Timothy chapter 5, notably. Uh, he talks about, mentions it in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 9 and 10 as well. Uh, and, and so here is a principle that's at play here in this allocation of land that the people who are going to be ministering the word of God, uh, leading the people in their worship of Yahweh, uh, encouraging them in their prayers, offering the sacrifices, they are going to uh, need care of and looking after. Because if you wanted to do that and not just be busy about their normal work, well, that's, that, this, that's the price that you pay. You free them up. And it's the principle behind uh, the stipends that Anglican ministers and others get, that it's, um, it's not meant to be that they get rich. It's meant to be that they uh, earn a living that's to get them out of their normal secular work so that they can be devoted to uh, the service of the people of God through the word of God and prayer. Uh, and so that's that's kind of the link there. But th these people, it's physical and it's allocated uh, and it's right throughout the nations and the whole of the nation and all the tribes are going to have to share the burden. Notice that a couple of the tribes get off a bit lighter. So the tribe of Benjamin, they have to allocate less cities. Uh, but this is, again, casting by lots. And so it's all under God's sovereign control. But it also turns out to be uh, as we saw earlier, uh, an act of grace and righteousness as well, because the small tribes, well, the lot doesn't, you know, when they, they, they cast the dice uh, or uh, draw short straws, as it turns out in God's sovereignty and his righteousness, uh, the little tribes provide less and the big tribes provide more. Uh, notice also that uh, several times it's mentioned that uh, the cities of refuge come up. We saw them in our last devotion uh, that there were to be six cities but by Moses' command many years ago that were cities of refuge you could flee to if you'd accidentally killed someone. Say so you were chopping a tree and the head flew off the an axe and accidentally hit someone. You could flee to one of these cities of refuge. And there were six of them throughout the 12 tribal allocations. Uh, and five of them, I think it was, got mentioned as now they're going to belong to the priests. So just about all of the cities of refuge are going to be um, the priest cities. And I, I think that says something about uh, God's wisdom in, um, in choosing these cities for, uh, the, for the cities of refuge. They've already been allocated, but the, the priests are going to be given those ones to manage control and so on. Is going to speak of the mercy of God and his provision that you're going to be going to the places for refuge that are controlled by the people who intercede with God and who minister the word of God. And I think that's a great blessing for people in very difficult situations. Uh, and it's part of the principles that God's setting up here for the future. And, uh, and, and so it's just a, a fascinating uh, little finish. But then the conclusion of the chapter is that, okay, this is the end of all the allocations. This is the final thing that had to be divvied up. And uh, we notice here that the Lord has um, gave Israel rest because he had fulfilled his promises. And so they're at rest from their war. They're at rest because God has delivered. And I think that's the great thing to take note of from all these chapters of allocations. As it says, reference material, but it shows you uh, the Lord is good for his word. He cares for his people, whoever they are. He cares for all the tribes. He cares for the priests who get to minister in a different way. Uh, he cares for the people who are going to be in the future um, you know, uh, accidentally committing manslaughter and things. He's caring for everyone so that justice, righteousness, mercy might flow. And so it's a wonderful testimony, even though it's a, a great long list of reference material. It's a great testimony to the character of God, to his greatness. And also in this final allocation of the priesthood to the provision that he's going to make through the Lord Jesus Christ, who is our ultimate priest, the one we worship, the one we thank God for his mercy in saving us for a land, not this land, but the greater, the greater kingdom of heaven that is ours. Uh, and that inheritance is sure because God always fulfills his promises, particularly his promises to give us the inheritance that he's 
allocated and he does it through the Lord Jesus, our great high priest. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your mercy and love and for your wisdom and for the way that you uh, gave in accordance with your promises the land to the Israelites. Thank you for the special provision for the priests of Israel. Uh, and we pray, please, that we would learn to care and give to uh, support the work of ministry missionaries uh, in our own churches. Uh, help us to uh, know that that's the way that you have ordained that uh, support is given for your workers. And so we pray that we'll be willing and generous givers to, to that cause, uh, uh, knowing the benefits that we get from the ministry of your word. Uh, and also for those who've gone out, that we, we want to pray that many, many more might come to know you through the evangelists and missionaries who uh, we sponsor and who you sent out into the world. Father, thank you that you keep your promises and we thank you for our great high priest, the Lord Jesus, who's offered the one true sacrifice for sin, who's a king of mercy, uh, who loves us. And we pray that all of our lives might be devoted to him. And we thank you that we can look forward to your promises being filled because you've been always trustworthy and always will be trustworthy because we see your promises fulfilled here. You are good for your word. We thank and praise you for that great encouragement and hope that we can have in Jesus name. Amen. God bless everyone. Catch you for another devotion tomorrow.